Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, or howdy if you're new. Today, we're going to talk about the ally and some accessories and also some tips and tricks on how to make sure that you are on the latest drivers, have some of the best performance, and answer some questions that I've been getting asked over and over. So I thank you guys for coming back in. Also, thank you to the OG channel members. You guys are the GOAT and I love you and I appreciate your support. It means the world to me here. And we're also gonna talk about ethics and sponsorship deals and answer some other questions as well towards the end for you OGs who actually care about this channel and you 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 wanna hear my side of some, some, uh, some juicy stuff. Okay, without further ado, let's dive right on in. This is the current state of my ROG ally. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is it's not water cooled anymore. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I loved the water cooling mod. I'll show the video up here. You can go watch it if you haven't seen it. The water cooled ROG Ally was so good, it was so fun. However, I needed to put this thing back to stock. I've been dealing with some kidney issues again and I've been kind of in bed a lot and I, I needed to get my Ally uh, back in the bed with me so I could take my mind off of things. The Legion Go is actually probably going to be leaving the channel. Uh, actually, it, it is. Um, I'm trading it back with the person I bought it from, and we'll be bringing some new handhelds on the table. So we've got not one, but two new handhelds coming that you'll see in the following week or two. Give it give it a little time, but you'll, you'll see something you've not seen here before. So that will be fun. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is the buttons. Man, oh man, you guys love these buttons, and I guess I completely underestimated how much you like the buttons. Sometimes I get a little discouraged to talk about mods or to talk about certain things, because there's a lot of haters out there, especially in the modding community. Some people just think these devices are perfect, and they think they should just not be modified at all. The buttons are very fun they're very cool i love the way they look i don't know how they're coming across on camera if they're super bright or dim but they're actually very very tolerable even at full brightness at night your thumb covers them up so it's not really a big deal now one of the other things is these abxy buttons and the d-pad now all of these were printed using my bamboo labs a1 mini it's currently about a 200 dollars printer not sponsored i bought that with my own money i love that printer and it's super easy to use. You just pull it out the box. It's 90% assembled. You just take out like a little screw and move it. It's very easy. The software is very newbie friendly. You don't need to know the first thing about 3D printers to get started with the Bamboo Labs printers. They are very entry level as far as the skill needed. No bed calibration needed. It does everything automatically. It's true. So 200 bucks, you could print all this stuff. I got all of these designs for the buttons from uh, Thingiverse. I believe the person who made them is, yes, it's Kira. I'll put it up above. So if you want to check out these buttons, definitely go drop by the Thingiverse and uh, tell them I sent you. Tell them CPPC Tech sent you. They are really pretty good. There's a few kind of like trial and error things that have to happen when you print the joysticks, for example, uh, as far as different layer height, different... Um, you know, just different settings you can choose on there. So it does take some tinkering and no 3D printer is the same. So my settings might not work for you depending on what printer you have. But if you have any issues, drop in the Discord. I'll, I'll lend you uh, some advice on, on what I did and maybe show you some screenshots in the app. But anyways, they printed out pretty nice. I had to do a little finishing on the underside with a razor blade to kind of open up the hole a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. That's it. And uh, yeah. We did that. The ABXY buttons needed some finishing on the outer tops of them. They were a little rough, but it wasn't too bad. I, I just polished those by hand on my little desk mat here and just rubbed them. <laughs> Give your meat a good old rub. That's it. And then they smoothed out a lot. Now the D-pad, you'll see some layer lines, but it's not too bad. It actually feels really good. It is better than the stock one for sure. I think it's much better for the games that I play, not, you know, accidentally clicking the sides here. The little ring around it just pops on the top. It is all printed in a PLA Plus, by the way, except these. These are printed in PETG Clear. Now, the only other downside is putting the D-pad and these buttons is super, super difficult. You have to remove the entire motherboard. If you are not very keen on removing the motherboard, I would highly suggest 
not doing it <laughs> it's just simply very difficult and very tricky but it's doable it's it's about a 7 out of 10 on the on the difficulty scale doing the joysticks are way easier though these are the most uh easy to do mod you, you basically just take out the back plate and then there's some daughter board screws and it pops right out there's it's not much to do these if you are wanting to do these like I said, I'll leave links below, pick up a 3D printer or bug people on Etsy who 3D print stuff and maybe they could print it for you. I, however, have decided against doing 3D printing and modding for the time being for other people. I have always turned people down, but kind of kept it in the back of my mind when people ask, like, maybe I could help them eventually or maybe I could and I tell them to check back with me. Maybe eventually I'll do it. I, I don't think I'm going to do it. There's simply uh, two reasons. One, there's always that guy or that girl who is going to claim that you did something to their device that they didn't like or you didn't do the mod right or there was a scratch on their screen that wasn't there before. There's always that that person. And I don't want the responsibility of having someone's device and doing work to it and then not being happy with it or having an issue with it later. So no. And also modding is always at your own um own risk so if you are modding your device and you scratch your device or you break something that is not on me that is on you that is a skill issue and i'm sorry that it has happened to you but it's only happened to me one time where someone tried to watch one of my tutorial videos and they didn't listen carefully and they thought their instructions would be better they modified my guide they used different size thermal pads they dented their heat pipe and they've been griping and whining and complaining and moaning about it ever since apparently not only are you a hot dog a grandstand or a showboat and a prima donna but you're a liar too that's the thing about it i didn't touch his device he never sent it to me i never agreed to have it sent to him he never asked me he took it on his own volition to do those mods, and that is on him. So if you're still salty about that, I'm really sorry, but I don't know what you expect out of me since I had no partaking of you messing up your device. So stop whining to the mods and telling other people that I've dented your heat pipes when you and the mods are lying, and I can prove it. Anyways, so the backplate, I put the handheld DIY backplate on here, which I love. This thing is my favorite. I have had every other handheld backplate out there for different handhelds and different brands. And as you guys know, you know I tell the truth here. I'm, I'm going to keep it 100 with you, and I'm not going to shove a turd in your pocket. A lot of people were mad about the Vitcher review because it was hashtag sponsored or whatever, but that's the thing about it. Most YouTubers out here reviewing these and a lot of other stuff, it's all sponsored. They just fail to disclose it to you because they know that people are going to poo-poo all over them if they actually say it's sponsored. So when someone is doing a review, whether it's sponsored or not, you just need to trust the person. If you trust the person, then it's all good. If you don't trust me, then I'm sorry, but you know, you should watch some of my previous videos where I have roasted products in the past that I just didn't like. Like this, this is the JSOX backplate. I didn't really care for it that much. It does its job, it's decent, it's cool. At the time it came out, it wasn't bad. But when the handheld DIY backplate was sitting side by side of this thing, you immediately feel the quality difference and the temperatures, the design, everything was better on this. And I was extremely, extremely clear, even though both of these were sent over for review, I was still very critical of a lot of the stuff on both of them. And that's just the thing about it. I was critical of the speakers. I said I didn't like the audio uh, as much as some people did. I didn't give it a 10 star rating. That's the thing. I was honest about it. If, if you don't think I'm being honest, then I'm sorry, but I gave it a good review. I wrote my own script. I gave everything uh, from my point of view and my passion. I did not have to have that script approved. I did not have to have the video approved. I wrote everything on my own volition. They did let me keep the device, but no money was exchanged. Anything you see here on this channel will not impact my review if it's sent over or if I buy it. You know, I've, I've always been that way with you guys. But anyways, I digress. So the handheld DIY backplate is my, my backplate of choice. I've got the thermal pad underneath it in between the heat pipe and the backplate, which does lower temperatures. Another thing I've been really wanting to talk about is these tech coolers. This is the Red Magic tech cooler. It works really well, but also the ones that the other companies are selling, it, they're all about the same if you look at whatever wattage it can do, and they will magnetically attach to the back here with a little plate. 
those are good they will lower temperature significantly it's another reason the water cooling mod is just not even needed it was fun i've got the handheld diy backplate buttons those are awesome they're really good if you've ever had any button fitment issues or heard about button fitment issues don't worry they got you covered there is an like a, a little kit that actually goes on the back side of these that'll eliminate any button travel issues at all i, I definitely can't speak highly enough of them now these are not secured. I don't have the screws in them because I'm still taking this thing apart, putting it back together, doing some more mods, which you will see on the next video. Trust me, got more mods coming. Don't worry. And the other cool thing about the handheld DIY backplate is I can just slap my battery on. So a lot of people ask me why I took the battery mod off, why I don't have the battery mod in here anymore. It's just simply too much. It's too bulky. It's too big. I don't, I don't really need it. It was cool to do for all the people who wanted to see the mod being done so they could see if it was worth it or not. But the U-Green straps on the back, it's, it's worth it in my opinion. But this would be a great dock for Steam Deck users. So if you have a Steam Deck or you have any other handles that don't have vents on the back, hey, this might be the dock you've been waiting on right here. This is actually a really nice value. It comes in uh, between 45 and 50 bucks, I believe, but they, they have a 20% off sale going on and they've got a ton of sales that make it a lot cheaper than it normally is. So check those sales out. I'll link everything below. So we have over here on the left side, you can hook up your mouse and keyboard and keep it on the left side, whether it's a dongle or wired. If you're a left hand person, this will be the dream for you. On the right side, we have the micro SD card and the full size SD card reader. So if you don't trust your SD card reader in the Ally or you don't want to RMA it, you go, go ahead and use this. It'll, it'll save you some time. We also have power delivery right here that'll support up to 100 watts coming in. HDMI will also do 4K 60 or 1080p 120. We've got a gigabit ethernet, 10 gigabit per second USB-A and 10 gigabit per second USB-C. This is a metal top right here, and it's got like a little rubbery non-slip finish, and it folds up pretty nice. It's a cool little dot with a stand built in. Here's why I don't like it. I primarily use the Ally, and if I put it on my Ally like so, it blocks off some of those vents. If I unfold it all the way, and put it like that, it still blocks most of the intakes for, for the cooler. You can find a way to do it like this where you can maybe prop it up in here or even put it like that where it stands up a little straighter but i don't like that situation that much so this doesn't get a 10 out of 10 for me it gets about an 8 out of 10 because the two points i'm going to take off is not being fully in the right position for me it's just a personal thing does it still work and function Yes, 100%, this works amazingly. You can get 30 watt turbo out of this. Everything works good. Speaking of 30 watt turbo, if you're ever gonna use a dock, uh, there's still some confusion about these docks. And I'm gonna quickly clear that up for you guys. If you're gonna use your stock power adapter, just know this is 65 watts. The Ally, in order to let you go into that 30 watt turbo mode right here, cause you see when it's unplugged, it says 25 watt turbo. And that's just the, you know, APUs, wattage rating that it's, it's trying to run at it, it can boost above that of course so it can it can actually hit 30 watts even on battery power but if you want to hit those higher boost levels like 53 watts and so on you need to be plugged in and running it a 30 watt turbo or 30 watt manual and if you are running a dock and you hook stock power adapter up the dock consumes just a few watts of power anywhere between three and five watts. But the problem lies within the Ally not seeing enough power coming in and it will not let you go outside of that 25 watt turbo mode. And the reason is it does not have exactly the power it's rated for to run that because there is power to go to all the other components. So it needs to be able to balance the rest of that power load out to the rest of the device, like charging the battery, running the lights, running the screen, running the NVMe running the chipset. There's way more than just the APU at that 30 watts. So what you'll need is a 100 watt adapter plugged into this in order to get past that barrier. Now you don't need a U-Green, you can use any brand you want. And the reason I jumped from 65 to 100 is for one reason and one reason alone. You don't see a 70 watt, 75, 80, 85. It just jumps straight from 65 to 100. It's kind of weird. But most of the power adapters that I've seen, there's a few niche ones out there, but I don't, I don't have any experience with them, so I don't recommend them. But this is my go-to, is 100 watts. It just, it does everything you need it to. You've still got room to expand. You've still got room if you need more stuff powered on the dock. The dock will be able to send out that power. You're good. 100 watts is all you need. You're learning so many important things. 
and I'm so proud of you. So there's that. Now, a lot of other people also have been asking about what NVMe and what heatsink to run. Honestly, I'm gonna drop a link below for the NVMe tier list, and it will show you different features, whether it has cache, whether it's TLC, whether it's QLC, the read and write speeds. It'll give you a lot of data, and you should really be looking at this data before you buy a drive. The two tips I have is definitely buy a woman that has cash and definitely buy a TLC drive. And the third bonus tip is just don't buy anything that's too spicy of a drive. Any of these 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 read and write speed drives run hot. They are too hot for the Ally. Even with a heat sink, they're still going to get pretty toasty. And all that extra heat just goes right back into the board, the system, and you're just trapping all the heat in there. Uh, this is an A Data S70. Blade, it is a great drive. That that is done well for me. I've also got this Predator drive. This is a GM 700. It's a little too spicy for the Ally, but it still can do okay. My favorite go-to drive is always the P3 Plus. It is the budget-friendly option for this that doesn't overheat and run too hot. I really like those drives a lot. However, the second part of my uh, recommendations is price to performance. If I recommend drive A and it's $200 at the time of my recommendation and you need a drive for a month from now, but you're asking me today, but a month from now this thing goes off sale and now it's $300. Well, then I'm gonna come out and recommend drive B. So I don't, and, and don't mix these up, they could be either one. But look, I recommend stuff based on price per performance. If it doesn't represent a good value, I'm just simply not gonna recommend it to you. So that's something that comes into play when it comes to recommendations. Now, when it comes to my ethics and what I recommend, I love these Vitra glasses. I'll, I'll touch back on this quickly and it was simply just something I needed to bring up. These were sent over. I told you earlier that I was not paid to say it. I did get to keep the product, but I'm not selling the product. So it doesn't represent any money to me. I'm not, I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to keep them. If I was to sell these products like some people do, then that's where, in my opinion, payment comes into play. However, with YouTube's standards and legal reasons and everything, you have to disclose that. If someone sends you a product to review, even if you get to keep it, it still has to be hashtag quote unquote sponsored. And that's the problem is people see that and they immediately crap talk you and poo poo on you in the comments. They immediately click off your video and disregard anything you say. This is another point I need to bring up. If you look at Amazon reviews and look closely, underneath a lot of those reviews, those are paid reviews. And a lot of these people actually are legitimately getting paid for these reviews or they're getting to keep the product for free. You have to really make sure that you trust the person making the review and they're not just doing it to keep getting free products. I turn down more products per week and more deals per week than pretty much anyone I know. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people do as well, turn deals down. I've been offered payment for CD key selling websites. I've been offered payment for video editing software. I've been offered payment for tons of different products that I have looked up on my own time, watched other reviews, read other comments, and I've gathered my own opinions and findings and I just simply politely declined. So if something is not good, I usually will catch it before it gets on the channel. There's always going to be one or two products that I'm curious about to try and you'll see my opinion of them when that happens. I have to spend time editing, I have to spend time filming, I have to spend time writing my script, gathering facts, testing. So it's a lot of work that I have to do into putting in a product review. And I always try to bring up pros and cons and, and, and frame it in the best light I can, of course. But if I can't frame it in a perfect shade of light, I'm not I'm not gonna be able to do that. If if I can't be honest, I can't I can't lie. I enjoy this. This is a hobby. This is fun for me. I don't make enough money on YouTube to even buy a, a cart full of groceries. Literally what I make on YouTube per month will not even pay for a full cart of groceries at any grocery store in the country. I can, I can assure you that for sure. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not good, but you know, it is something. So in the future, I might be a little bit more picky with sponsors and sponsored videos. And I might try to, instead of making a full dedicated video, unless it's something really special and I'm really, really passionate about, I might loop them into one video where it's like an accessory roundup or something like that. But that way you could see from other brands and what other accessories are out there and you can kind of gather your own opinions to what you need and what you don't need. Well, look guys, I don't want to waste any of your time. I don't want to stick any turds in your pocket once again. And I thank you so much, like for real. 
Here's a bonus tip for all of you who stayed to the end. It's free real estate. If you want to make sure your device is up to date, BIOS 338, it is out. They lowered the fan curve. It will give you five decibel reduction on how loud those fans are. And I noticed the temps were pretty much dead on the same on 25 watt turbo mode when I'm playing Forza, it's 69C, nice. But other than that, I haven't had any issues at all. You should never be worried or scared to update to the latest BIOS, but here's the thing you need to know. What I would really strongly recommend doing is updating all of the programs that I'm gonna tell you now. So first of all, you're gonna wanna go to the My Asus app. And when you go to the My Asus app, you're gonna click on updates right here, update everything through here. Now you're gonna go to Armory Crate. Go to this section over here, update everything in here, reboot, check it again. Sometimes these updates need to be uh, installed and then rebooted and then there might be another one pop up. <laughs> check it, always trust me. The next section you're gonna check is in Windows Updates. Windows Updates has two parts you have to look at. First, you wanna look at regular updates. Then you wanna look at optional updates. This has actually had some firmwares in here. They've had some driver updates. There's been a lot of stuff. So make sure you check in all the spots for updates. And the last and final spot is the Microsoft Store. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, there has actually been some AMD Adrenaline updates. There's been some other updates for different programs that help make the Asus work. Like even Armory Crate can get updates through here as well. So make sure you're checking all these places. When you have all the updates done, if you want to tune it even further, like debloat it, definitely drop by the Discord, tag me or 105.4, especially 105.4. He has got some tweaks that you just click and go and it does all the hard work for you. So if you are looking to tune your system, definitely definitely check that out for sure. I am going to be bringing you a Modern Warfare 3 tuning guide. And then when Black Ops comes out, I will be bringing you one out for that. We're also going to go over some benchmarks and how I benchmark stuff and a lot of the deeper tuning aspects on one of the next videos. So if you are looking forward to finding out how to get the most bang for your buck performance, have the lowest idle RAM usage, have the best temperatures. I'm gonna show you all the pro tips in one video. It will be a banger, it will be a long one, but it would be a good one, I can assure you that. Okay guys, well look, I think that about wraps it up, right? Think we're good? We're good. If you made it to the end, you're an OG. Thank you to the channel members again. You guys are freaking amazing and thank you so much for all your support and love. And everyone else, thank you so much as well. But until the next one, I hope all of you guys have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.